What's the sound of a pizza man? What kind of pizza are you making? Just a New York style. Okay. Just New York style. So this week nice. I have a dough that's made with Caputo Americana, which I had actually only started using recently. I uh, you know, I, I like to experiment with all kinds of flours and right. and grains. So usually I buy, I'll buy like a 50 pound bag and it'll last me like a year. Right. Okay, what should, I, what should I do next? But there's a store at Long Island here, uh, Sansone Foods, and they sell, you know, like 10 pound bags of commercial flowers, like all Trumps and King Arthur, Sir Galahad, and right. Lancelot, and they have uh, some of the Caputo flowers as well. So I was like, you yeah, know, let me just grab the bag and play with it. I feel like he's. I feel like he's done with pizza. I feel like pizza's like. <laughs> I do. I. I don't know. Like it, I. Um, yeah, I feel like pizza was not like a passion of his necessarily. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 you know, you gotta feed your family and. Yeah, it was more. Yeah, it was more of a job for him. It was more of a, you know, I have to do this to feed my family, yeah. and. Yeah. So like. <laughs> So yeah, so that, and that's I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of weird to me now because I know I I know so many pizza people that are like really into it and really like it's like yeah. a passion and, and yeah. they're like so yeah. When people ask about my dad, it's it's really like awkward almost for me. It's yeah. like well, he wasn't really like you know pushing any boundaries or anything. It was it was literally mm -hmm. like just doing it just like you know this is what customers want i'm gonna make it and you know I'm gonna spend my my 12 hours here per day yeah um, which I, I think is totally normal right like yeah you work your butt off like it's a job it's easy for us to like romanticize it but yeah you know you're not putting in the work right you know, people, are, people are gonna ask like, oh when you're gonna open your shop it's like Relax. It's uh, you know, we we can preserve this uh, this history in other ways. I think, right? Which is something I did at my family shop, uh, which initially sounded weird weird to people because they're like, "Well, it's your family store. Like, why is it a pop up?" And it's like, "Well, you know, I'm doing something different." I'm uh, let me show you. So I did Detroit style pop ups at my family shop. It's kind of a way to bring more attention and energy to the store. I have 16 of these. Oh, nice. Lloyd, I love my 14. Detroit pans. And this, this is the pan that we use for our Greek style pizza. Okay. Which is what our, you know, our main business was. Right. So, um, so what is, what is a Greek style pizza? Yeah, I, I sometimes I still, trip up and like explaining it but yeah. so i think the full name is new england greek style pizza mm -hmm. it's a style that originated in new england like the boston or somewhere around there it's made in a shallow pan like this from what i can see it's usually a very low hydration dough our dough is like maybe low to mid 50s like it's very very easy to work with okay. and you know it's enriched it's got fats in there uh direct form it from it so usually you're not doing you know, starters or anything like that it's just yeast right. just let it rise and you let it proof in the pan the cheese they use is usually a blend of white cheddar and some other kind of hard cheese. Okay. Um, I think maybe like provolone, something like that. We used uh, white cheddar and low moisture mozzarella. So when I was learning about Detroit style pizza, it uses uh, the traditional way, it uses a uh, cheese called brick cheese, right. which I have and it kind of smells. I don't love it. <laughs> Well, you know, I was reading about this, right? And like, I was reading that brick cheese is, it's kind of related to the cheddar, right? So I'm like, wait a minute, well, well my family uses cheddar in, in their pizza. And you know, it's Detroit style, it's a, 
it's a pan pizza. Like, let me, uh, let me look more into this. So I ordered, I ordered a couple of pans. Right. Yeah, went to family shop. I took same dough, same sauce, same cheese. Panned it out, letterproof. Baked it all together, and, and on the first shot, like it was, I'm like, wow. You know, I didn't have to do anything different here. Okay. And we had something great. I've never, I've never had New, New England uh, Greek style pizza. You know, out in New, New England, right. I've never had Detroit style in Detroit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So this is all kind of just guesswork, right. and yeah, you know, doing my own thing. And you know, for me, I'm not, I'm not someone that's like, okay, you have to do it this way. This is like authentic. This is a tradition. You know, like, look, as long as it tastes good, you know, I'm not claiming authenticity here as long as it's good right. i think people are gonna like it yeah. so i was doing these pop-ups where you know i would make detroit style i initially was doing it by the slice and then it was getting kind of crazy and people were waiting like an hour i was like oh no i feel bad now let me uh, let me rethink this so then i did, started doing it by the pie and having people have like a schedule you know like a designated time slot and that goes way more smoothly. So in addition to like making another style, I was like, well, you know, what else can I do here? How can I improve upon this? So I was getting more you know, into bread making and grains and things like that. So I was like, okay, what if I like milled my own flour for this, right? Like, what if I made like my own starter? And like, I just, just kept going, right. you know, every pop-up would like, I would add like a new like feature to it, you know? So, Part of my flour now for my current formula for my Detroit is it's uh, milled fresh and, and whole grain. Yeah, fresh whole grain. Not all of it, but like part of it. If it was all whole grain, it tastes like health food. Right. Uh, how, how is uh, grinding your own flour like? Uh, does it make does it make a big difference? In terms of like flavor, it definitely is a different flavor. I would say. Um, you know, I, I I got inspired by I don't know if you have Scar's Pizza out here, Scar Pimentel. I, I, I know of Scar's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, when I first heard that like you know someone was like milling their own flour. I was like, what? You can like you can do that? Yeah. Um. So I you know I looked into it and then I, I got this mill. Show you. Called the the mock mill. And so out here we have um, the Grow and Icy Grains project, which I have you know very easy access to. Okay. So they had a uh, like a weekly farmers market, and they would you know kind of every week they would be a different part of town. And when they were close, I would buy some grains and start like reading about like okay which kind of grains because you know there's so many. Um, so I did my research and got the grains that I thought would work. Started playing around with it, and then it really, it really resonated with people. I think that I was using fresh grains, right. and I would, you know, on Instagram, I'd like film the grains actually being milled and be like, you know, like look right here, like this is, right. it's no bullshit. It's like <laughs> this is right. it's the real deal. Real it I mean, it's a yeah, it's a it's a it's a huge selling point, especially if you're trying to justify, you know, a cost. Recently, I made. I did a pop-up just right at my apartment right here, doing upside down Sicilians. Okay. So I did basically the tartine bread country sourdough formula. And just using that to make Sicilians and I bake them using the Detroit style pans. Pan pizzas are very easy to get high quality at home versus New York style. Like New York style, you get to really like crank up the heat and like it's blazing there's gonna be flour everywhere pan pizza i feel like it's, it's, you can kind of like break the process down it's right. much more organized you can do a par bake right. yeah in terms of like buying gadgets whatnot I, i'm usually very forgiving mm -hmm. for myself in that category like otherwise i'm, I'm pretty prudent with you know, my excessive whatever right but like when it comes to like my pizza and bread making like because i feel so committed to getting better mm -hmm. i'm like you know it's it's okay you know, right, if it's right. you end up not using it, then you know, then that's just 
that's just one thing you learned, right? Like, you learned that that's not the thing that you you want to use in your, your pizza making. Do you have a favorite pizza toy? There's tool. too many here. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what do I have? I will say, like, hang on, I'm going to show you. I think, like, any, like, pizza guy, you know, that's, regardless of yeah. your skill set, yeah. I need to get one of those. <laughs> yeah, the Dexter, like... There's, this is it. I, I'm one to like not pick favorite, like best, like this is the all time best, whatever. Like when it comes to pizza cutters, like this is it. This yeah. is, you know, cause it has like this bevel blade. So you're not like going back and forth. Right. Um, it lasts forever. Right. I would say like that's, that's one of my favorite pizza tools. Um, yeah, I bought so much stuff. <laughs> it's all in, like my parents' house in their basement. Right. Um, I have, I have two uni ovens. I have like this other, other brand oven in my backyard. Okay. A couple of pizza steels. Right. I gotta start like cataloging what I have. How do you like your uni? Your uni. So I, I, I had the Pro Three, okay. which, uh, which I think is really good for Neapolitan. And. I don't always make Neapolitan, so I recently got the Dakota 16, which I feel like has much more like even distributed heat that you can kind of adjust it. Okay. And I've only used it once, but I really, I really like it. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to using that. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, I, it depends on like the style of making. You know, like people want like right. they're asking, well, which is better, which is like you know. It, it depends on what you're trying to make, you know? Yeah, so the Pro 3 I had, I, you know, I've used charcoal and wood, and I think that taught me how much I don't want to get into like wood-fired pizza making, because it's like, you can't focus on your pizza making, like you have to focus on like, getting the heat right, like either it's yeah. like too low or you know, it's like blazing, and so I, I have a deep respect for deck ovens. You know, my, we had a Blodgett oven, my family's pizzeria, which mm. I really liked. So I'm, I'm very partial to that. Yeah. yeah. You don't see, you don't see them all the time now. I can't say enough good things about, about Scott. Like, I think he was a big reason yeah. why I got into pizza. Like, I, I saw that it wasn't just like this thing that my parents did for business. Like, there was this, you could use it as a tool for so many other things. You know, like he did like Slice Out Hunger. He, learn about history and you can learn science it's like it's just a gateway to so many things mm -hmm. i've learned like so much about science just <laughs> just from pizza making you know yeah yeah it's it's uh it's a lot more technical than i think people think um, it's crazy yeah you know like i i want to meet pizza makers who are better than me and like make me i want them to make me feel stupid Mm -hmm. So I can, I can learn more and get better. Is there anyone that you haven't met that you want to meet in the in the pizza world? Probably Chris Bianco. Mm. I would say I did I did meet him at Pizza yeah. Expo that year. He did the keynote. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I met him very briefly, like using a Q and A. But I wouldn't say that's like an actual like right. sit to, sit down and get to know him. Um, yeah, probably him. Because I would say, just from the way he talks, you get a sense like this is a very genuine human being. Yeah. You know? And like, he's able to express something through his pizza making. That's, I guess like, words don't really capture. Yeah. If you're listening, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> With people like him, you kind of see like, it's more than the pizza. You know, like, I'm not doing this because, like, I'm crazy at pizza. Like, there's so much more depth to this. Right. You know, this is something my family did for for two decades. Yeah. And if they, you know, they go retire, it's like, well, what's left? Right. right? So at least this is something that, like, kind of, some kind yeah. of torch being passed. Even though, you know, they didn't do New York style. And, you know, I grew up thinking, like, oh, this pan pizza is, like, this is pizza. This is how it's made. The first time I saw, like, a dough go like right on the on the floor I'm like oh god it's gonna burn right no it's 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 funny because like i think most people 
I mean, it's it's probably different now, but like growing up, when I was growing up, like pizza was just like pizza. It was just like one type of, really? it was like New York style pizza and that's it. That's it. I feel like now people are like, oh, there are different types of pizza. Um, and that has, part of that has to do with like. <laughs> and that's everywhere, right? It is everywhere, yeah. And part of it has to do with like, I hate to say this, but like chains, like introducing um, pizza yeah, styles, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, like with like Pizza Hut introducing Detroit style, it's like, okay. <laughs> um, this is a thing. Well, there's like, a regional chain called Jets. Jets, yeah, we have yeah. Jets. Yeah, um, which I, I think is actually, I, I like their Detroit style. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's uh it's a little pricey. It's a little pricey yeah. for what it is, but yeah, it's it's. All right, well here it is. All right, let's see that pie. Look at that. That looks great. Well, I think at this angle you can't see that's it. a it's not a perfect circle. So. <laughs> Fine. You can't taste shapes. What's that? You can't taste shapes. You can't taste shapes. Well, what about pasta? Right, there's like the. Oh, I guess. <laughs> you can't taste pizza shapes. How's that? What do you like I wonder... uh, My mouth. <laughs> uh, it's just, I it typically like oregano or, you know, nothing, nothing crazy. What do you finish your pies with? Oregano and uh, usually pecorino and, um, you know, a couple of squirts of olive oil. Yeah, I think the, the, the oregano and the pecorino together. Not just like for taste, but like visually, I think it really mm. adds something. Because it's like the uh, the residual heat in the pie. And it's like the oils come out. So where where are you exactly? So I'm in Woodside. <laughs> oh, okay. So Woodside is the actual place. Okay. Got it. Um, so it's a neighborhood in Queens. Um, I grew up in Jackson Heights, which is okay. one of the neighboring neighborhoods to here. Okay. Um, I have a lot of Queen's Pride, which if you get to know me, I won't shut up about it. Okay. But um, Queen's is very diverse, and I think Jackson Heights is known as being the world's most ethnically diverse neighborhood. Oh, wow. And there's supposed to be over 100 languages spoken within that neighborhood. Wow. Having grown, grown up there, it really shaped my worldview. Yeah. Um, very big tent person, you know, in terms of mm -hmm. the kinds of people and I guess the kinds of pizza styles that I'm accepting of. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you, you know. don't discriminate against uh, any of pineapple, pineapple pizza, like whatever, whatever you want, man. Yeah. Cool with me. Yeah. If you ever get out to Chicago, definitely hit me up. Yeah. I, I went to Naples in 2019 to compete. It was great. And, you know, Jonathan Goldsmith was there too. Okay. Uh, who was there? Scott was there. Tony Gimignani was there. John Arena, Laura Meyer, and like. Were they all competing, or were they? Uh, Scott, Tony, John, and Pete LaChapelle from Pizza Today. Right. Uh, were the judges. Got it. But uh, Laura, mm -hmm. Laura competed, and she actually won. Right. Uh, Audrey, Audrey Jane competed. Plus. Uh, Angelo Capitillo competed. Yeah, for me, that, that was a very big thing because it was like right when my parents retired too. Right. And, you know, for me, it's like I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the gray area. Right? It's like I work full time finance and it's like I'm doing all this pizza stuff. So it's like like an identity thing. It's like, like am I a pizza maker? Right. And like, well, yeah, you, you've got to pay your bills somehow. First time I competed was a couple years ago in Atlantic City. OK. And then Vegas. And then I think I did the same thing again. I did it in like City and Vegas again. Okay. Um, and then I did Naples, which is right. crazy. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, yeah. I'm assuming you had pizza while you were there. <laughs> okay, so like I'm from New York. Right. And I, you know, I go there thinking like, oh no, New York is pizza town. I mean, like that's New York yeah. pizza. It's like anonymous. I get to Naples. I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> Just everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. I, I don't um, even know how, like, how do you pick? Like, where do you go? Right. Isn't there, is there, is there like a place to go? Like, that's like, oh my God, you have to go here if it's, yeah. if you. Yes, yeah, so there's like the historical places. Um, right. like we went to, we went on a tour 
They went to the oldest existing pizzeria um, at Portalba. Okay. So we were just being there with like with Scott and Tony and everyone else was just like, wow. Like, um, and you know, there they have like the, uh, the portfolio pizza, which is like you fold it up like a wallet. So okay. I, I think I'm not as familiar with Neapolitan as I am with some of the other styles, but um, I think today's Neapolitan is kind of like a, that super puffy cornichone. Mm -hmm. Whereas I would say the, the original Neapolitan is more, you're supposed to be able to fold it up and not have as pronounced press to it. Did you have any uh, Roman style? Yes. So we went to, we did a couple of days in Rome as well. And we went to Pizarium, which is owned by uh, Bonchi. Bonchi, Gabriel Bonchi. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's like in a part of town that's just like, you know, not super fancy, like kind of, kind of close to, to the Vatican. Okay. Um, man, that is some good pizza, man. Yeah, Bonchi stuff is, uh, so there's a Bonchi here. Yeah. Uh, there used to be two, but one of them closed. But, um, and I actually, so he was here. I I, inter I interviewed him uh, oh, wow. when, he was, when he was here. Yeah. And Italian? He had, English? Uh, it was Italian. He had a translator with him. Like his, that like, is very cool, man. Yeah, cool. he had he had someone he had someone with him. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he like worked with him or something. But yeah, it was cool. It was cool to like to like meet him and and um, he made this like uh, this like like muffaletta sandwich at some point which which was really cool and um but yeah the pizza like the, the their pizza is so good all right can i show you how's that look yes good. very sexy maybe, maybe uh too much flour here an emilio slice if you want if you want to like uh like vacuum pack I know, I know some people do that. You know, uh, Nicole Russell, Last mm -hmm. Dragon Pizza. Mm -hmm. She does that. And her, her pizza is amazing. Yeah, I don't know how that, I don't know how that would like travel. I can't imagine it travels like great. Um, I just put like dry ice. Okay. It's frozen, and then once you get it, I think an article just came out in the Wall Street Journal on like the best frozen pizzas okay. in the country. Um, so Chris Bianco's on that, and my friend Natalie from her pop up, just called Trays. Okay. So it's like, she's on my. So. so it's like Days, Trays. Trays. Yeah. It. Yeah, it's yeah. a very cool name. Um, she's like grandma styles. Cool. And she was actually in that article, which is like awesome, you know, to, to be featured. Yeah. Some of these pizza makers. I haven't been. I haven't been to New York in such a long time. I should make a make a trip, uh, visit some spots. There's so many places that I haven't been. That There's I so many, man. So, like, yeah. e even if you're born and raised here, it's just it doesn't end. Right. You know, and by, by the time you get through all of them, like some new places pop up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah. when I was getting pizza making, I was more about like trying like every single possible spot. And you know, kind of thinking about it, like what's what's unique about this place and the style, and right. you know, write about it on Instagram. But I think within the last year, I've shifted more towards like I'm like, okay, like I've I have the space knowledge now. Let me focus on creating and getting better at my pizza making. Yeah, I think I think there are enough pizza reviewers out there. <laughs> there sure are, sure are. Thank you, man. I really I appreciate making the time and. Yeah, I, 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 think I appreciate it. Interesting enough, so at least. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, I, I, I appreciate you taking the time, and I will talk to you soon. <laughs> you, brother. Thank you. All right. Bye.